In this example, I want to address finding the future value of um, cash flows when I've got both an annuity and a lump sum. So let's say that today I have $50,000 that I'm saving for retirement, and retirement will occur in 30 years. Each year for the next 30 years, I plan to add an additional $1,000 to my account at the end of every year. So the annuity part will be an ordinary annuity and the 50000 I have today. So it will grow for an additional 30 years. And then the annuity will be added on December the 31st, essentially, of every year. Again, so each year that I make a deposit of $1,000, it's not going to earn interest the year that the deposit is made. And my question is, how much will I have at the 30th year? So this 50000 is a lump sum, and I'd have to use the future value of a lump sum equation to find the future value of it. The $1,000 represents an ordinary annuity and I'm si uh, solving for the future value of that so I'd need to find or use the future value equation for an ordinary annuity. So the future value equation for a lump sum you take the present value and you multiply by 1 plus i to the n that will find the future value of it and then to find the future value of an ordinary annuity you take the payment and you multiply by the interest factor, which is 1 plus i to the n minus 1 divided by i. So using the equation to find the, the final answer, I would take my $50,000 present value, and let's assume my rate is 10%. So I'd multiply it by 1 plus the rate of 10% to the power of 30. I take my payment of $1,000, multiply by the interest factor, which would be 1 plus an i of 10%, raised to the power of 30, minus 1 over i, oops, minus uh, or over 0 0.1, which is my i. I calculated this to be an interest factor 17.45. So I'd multiply the 50,000 by that, and I get 872,470.11. So you can see the 50,000 earns a lot of interest over 30 years. And then my $1,000 payment, the interest factor in the brackets here, I calculated that to be 164. 0.49. I think that's what my handwriting says. So multiply my, my 1,000 by the 164.49, I get 164,490. And the total is 1,036, or 1,036,964. ,036 I can do this on a financial calculator all at once, which is uh, certainly handy. So here are my five time value of money keys. This time I'm going to use four of the variables and solve for the fifth one. The one I'm solving for is the future value. Because I have an annuity of a thousand dollars, I need to tell the calculator whether it's an ordinary annuity or an annuity due. It's an ordinary annuity, so I'll set my calculator to end. My n is 30, my i is 10, my present value is the 50,000, and my payment is the 1,000. Now, since I entered these as both positive numbers, I should get a negative 1,036,000 or 964. Now what I cannot do in this particular case is 
mix signs. Like I don't want to make this negative and this positive, or this positive and this negative. Since these two cash flows are both going the same direction, they are being put into my retirement account. I have 50000 in there already, and I'm adding another 1000 I have to make them the same sign. It doesn't matter what sign I make them, either both positive or both negative, but they have to be the same sign. Now I could do this in Excel. Uh, just not, <laughs> not particularly smoothly. Let's see. Here we go. So in Excel, I'm after the future value again, uh, in my rate of 10%, my 30 years, my payment of 1000 and my present value of 50000 And then I could enter a type of zero to represent an ordinary annuity, but it automatically assumes that if you don't enter a type. And that should give me, ugh, I always do that apparently. That should give me my, um, Future, future value of a million thirty six thousand and note that I could make that one thousand negative the fifty thousand negative and it just returns a positive answer but if I make the one thousand negative and the fifty thousand positive it's not going to work <laughs>